Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video, I want to talk about Materia Melding. This is the basic feature that allows you to attach Materia, gems with stats basically, to your equipment. Being we've had a ton of new faces in recent months, and people still usually ask me questions about it from previous expansions anyway, I felt that a video was finally due. First up, a basic description on Materia itself. Materia comes in all shapes and sizes, all the substats you would normally find in gear, whether they be combat, crafting, or gathering, are represented in your Materia options. There are 10 grades of Materia, with the Materia from Endwalker being grades 9 and 10. While some of the lower ones can have value, especially for crafting and gathering, for combat, you'll really just be looking to use these when you hit max level. To actually meld it, you're going to need to acquire some gear that has a couple of open materia slots. Pretty easy to identify as it's two giant gem looking slots that don't have anything in them. Then to meld it, you have two options. One is materia melders in cities and hubs around the world. Take your gear and materia to them and they'll slot it right in for you for a small cost. The other option is to level a single crafter. One crafter covers melds for every job, so it's not too bad of an investment to just be able to take care of this yourself. Especially when we cover other elements of melding. Just head to Mutamix's camp in Central Thanalan and he'll cover you on all the feature unlocks that you need for Materia. Now in order to meld Materia, you'll need, well, Materia. Thankfully, there's a ton of ways to obtain it. For one, you can actually extract materia from gear that you have been using once it becomes fully spirit bonded. This is measured on the gear itself, and when something is fully spirit bonded, you'll get a little animation and a chat pop up to let you know that it is finished. You'll need to unlock materia extraction from Mutamix's camp, but anytime you see little white dots in your equipment menu, pull up the extraction menu and collect your prize. You also get some from expert dungeons, both in the chests and some of them from monsters, but in my opinion, the best place for materia is the hunt. These come from the hunt currency, as well as in the form of items you can exchange for materia from the materia vendors in town. Those same exchange items can often be obtained from treasure dungeons, and even when a role is in need in certain roulettes. As for the hunt itself, I have a whole video on that, and while it is an expansion old, all of its rules still apply to the more recent Endwalker hunts. I will leave you with one quick tidbit though, A rank hunts have a 50% drop rate on the exchange items for grade 9s and grade 10s, while S ranks will 100% of the time give you one of both. Thanks to the hunt, I haven't paid for materia in years though. As for what to meld, before we get more specific, definitely be using grade 10 materia as kind of your baseline for Endwalker. It has the highest substats and thus its top priority. Bear in mind that gear comes with a limit on how much of each substat it can have. When you look at the stats on your gear at a glance, whichever substat has the higher value is what the overall substat cap is for that piece, meaning any individual stat can't go over that value. Fortunately, it tells you the maximums at the bottom of the melding menu, so it's a quick and easy find. If there's ever a red number, meaning you won't get the full effect, move on to a different kind of materia that won't overcap. Now in most gear, there will be one or two open slots for you to put the materia in. However, gear that is crafted can actually be overmelded, also known as forbidden melding. This allows you to attach materia beyond the displayed maximum up to a total of five pieces. This comes with a risk though, you may lose the materia you are attempting to meld. For this reason, it's done by people with an excess of gill or materia, especially high-end raiders looking to do endgame content as soon as it comes out. If you're more of a casual player without a lot of resources, I'd recommend limiting the amount of overmelding you're doing. As for the overmelds themselves, the first overmelded slot should always be another grade 10 materia. This has a 17% chance of succeeding, but one of these is incredibly valuable, especially across every single piece that you can do it in. This is also the only overmeld slot that can actually use a grade 10 materia. For the rest of the slots, you'll have to use grade 9 materia. The odds of attaching these is very low, so expect to go through quite a few while you roll the overmelding dice. For future expansions, this trend is likely to continue, with the even-numbered materia being the higher stat value stuff, and the lower one, the odd numbers, actually being used strictly for overmelding. With crafting and gathering, they have all sorts of fancy rules and optimization, so I am really just talking about combat materia here. 
Now for the big question, what do you actually meld? Crit, tenacity, piety? I'll be honest, there's 19 jobs in the game, and even with me providing a number of generalizations, the specifics would be uber time consuming. For that reason, I've included resources below the stream for places people frequently go to obtain the most accurate melding and gearing information for every individual job. Now that doesn't mean I can't give you some basics. First of all, it's important to remember that while you might want to use one set for a whole role, such as a healer set, that melds are often very specific to one job. This is especially true when it comes to the skill speed and spell speed stat, which are used to determine the cast and recast times of your spells and weapon skills. There are tons of different builds for different jobs. Almost all of them hinge on the pros and cons of your specific job at those speeds. So you may be making compromises if you wish to omni-heal, omni-tank, or play multiple DPS that actually share gear. I won't mention skill speed or spell speed much from here on, but know that hitting that right value is key to a lot of builds. For healers, a safe bet is always critical hit rate. Healers fortunately get a lot of value out of this, since their damaging and healing spells can both crit, and the stat actually increases the potency and the frequency of your critical hits. Direct hit is also an immensely valuable stat, mainly because your base rate is 0%. With melding being the only way to obtain it on healer, it becomes a huge DPS increase for them, even if it doesn't affect their heals. Determination has also become a much better choice since it got buffed in Endwalker, so it doesn't hurt to meld this either. Spell speed we already mentioned, but some builds for specific healers have a ton more spell speed than anything else, so even with all the rules in place, spell speed can still be king at the end of the day. Finally, you have piety, which is great for helping with MP issues when you're first learning new raids or raiding altogether. There are people who do make specific sets with piety just for progressing through raids until they get comfortable enough to not need all that extra MP. Then we move on to tanks. They mostly want crit over direct hit over determination over tenacity. However, there is one exception. The warrior job hates the direct hit stat, since they frequently have 100% direct hit rate on all their strongest abilities. This means that you are either a warrior main and do all your melds for warrior, or you can properly meld the other three tanks and warrior takes a little bit of a hit. Fortunately, with that determination buff, running crit over determination over tenacity and ignoring direct hit like you would do for warrior really isn't the end of the world, but it is a concession at the end of the day. And then we move on to DPS. Oh boy. There are so many different rules here, it's almost meaningless for me to bring it up. It's simple enough for me to tell you, go crit over determination, and then determination and direct hit are about equal. I mean, that's a common rule, but it's really just a rule for you to settle. Like I mentioned earlier, due to the speed differences, it could go so many different ways. Summoner and Black Mage can both run really high spell speed sets, but Red Mage really doesn't like that, so you'd be sacrificing your Red Mage gear and your Red Mage stats to play these other two casters. Or you could go with a more traditional crit build and use it for all three, but it may not be the build you like the most on one of those jobs. Monk and Samurai usually have similar melds, though there are also super speedy Samurai builds that really don't mesh well with Monk. Then you have the ranged physical jobs, which all get along with mostly similar things. Some minor things that you can do to improve, but Biss on one really does work as Biss for all. So as you can see, there's a decent amount of variety. So again, those resources in the description will give you all the different builds, all the different sets, and trust me, they're gonna be way better off at getting you accurate information than this video that's really just meant to teach you the basics. Now I do get some other general questions about melding. A big one is when you should start melding. Now I've covered all this stuff for level 90, so you're probably wondering what about before that? And honestly, it's really not all that important. Most people don't meld at all before max level, either because they don't have materia or they're just going through the level so quick that the gear gets replaced and it kind of seems like a waste. If you want to meld a few things while you're going up, it will make you stronger. It will speed things up, but don't sit there and stress about it. Just if you have a few pieces of materia and you're like, oh, I can throw this in and it'll be so nice for me while I'm leveling. Cool. Just don't sweat it. Now, while some people ask when they should start melding, other people ask if it's really all that important. I mean, they see, oh, it's only 36 determination, 36 critical hit rate. That's not that big of a deal. And I'm here to tell you it is across all of your armor when you factor all of that in. Let me give you an example. Here's what my bard is currently wearing. And with this gear set, I have an extra 396 critical hit rate. So without those melts, I'd have 1,708 crit which would give me an 18.7% chance to crit with a 53.8% bonus damage when I do land a critical hit. 
Now with the 396, I'd be at 2,104, which would put me at a 22.9% critical hit rate and 57.9% critical hit damage. Yeah, that's just from my Materia melds. That's over 4% critical hit rate and over 4% critical hit damage across all of my skills across the fight. That's pretty substantial. And then I have determination melds and direct hit melds, and then there's food buff on top of that. So it really compounds super quick. Honestly, the big problem is the game doesn't tell you these things. You're probably wondering how I even have these numbers in the first place. And the only reason I do is because members of our community go out of their way to simulate this and figure it out with thousands and thousands and thousands of tests. And honestly, they just need to put it in the game. Sorry for the little rant. And other than that, I'm sure people are going to make note of things that I didn't talk about in this video. Materia transmutation is one of them, allowing you to gamble away materia in hopes of getting a different one that's decent. Something that I do on occasion, but it's not that super important. There's also, of course, me lacking the mention that you can even buy materia on the market board, although I feel like it was pretty implied. And also that some other features usually come around later that give you even more access to materia, whether it be deep dungeons, exploration content, or even beast tribe dailies. More and more ways to get materia come out over time. So while I've given you a few examples here, always keep an eye out because you can usually obtain plenty of materia without buying it. You just have to know where to look. But anyway, that's going to be a wrap for my guide slash video on materia melding. Hopefully it was of some help. And if you have more advice, please put it in the comment section of the video below. And if you're looking for more advice, just scroll down there. Hopefully you'll find something. Anyway, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care.